Tom here from Lauren Systems, and we now know how 3CX got hacked. It was a supply chain attack. And you're probably thinking, wasn't 3CX a supply chain attack? Yes, there was another supply chain attack that led to the 3CX supply chain attack. It's a software called Trader Technologies X Trader. We're going to be citing from Kim Zetter Zero Day, Google Threat Analysis Group, the TAG group as they call it, and the 3CX blog where Mandiant has posted updates to dive into these details so we can understand what happened. And I think some of the details are kind of interesting. I will have links right down below to those blog posts and a couple others. Brian Krebs also did a write-up on some of the broader expanded things that are learned from all of this because this attack was really targeted in a very narrow scope and it's showing just how difficult these attacks are to pull off but they're still really interesting because they didn't turn into quite the big security incident that it could have been but i think it's still a really interesting topic that we're able to stop it but understanding and unraveling this is a uh, well that's what we're going to dive through today and we're going to end it with some lessons learned now we don't have any details on how exactly this x trader software was compromised just that we know it was compromised and Mandian cited it as the source for the 3CX compromise. So we'll start here. Now, we know about the compromise from the Google Threat Analysis Group or TAG, countering threats from North Korea that linked right down below. The Google TAG report essentially says there was a campaign targeting news media and IT companies and they were offering them jobs and that interaction and engagement would sometimes lead to phishing, I imagine, that would say, hey, download this software. They also targeted cryptocurrency and fintech organizations, and that's more specifically related to the trading technology software, which was listed, among others, on this report from Google that it was a compromised piece of software used by the North Koreans in a very targeted campaign. Now, this is over from Kim Zetter's Zero Day report. The tainted software installed a backdoor on the employee's computer, giving the attackers full administrator and system level rights over the system. The hackers then stole the employee's work credentials, which gave them administrator level access to 3CX system as well. Trading Technologies was not a supplier of 3CX. The two software companies have no relationship to one another, the spokesperson said. And the X-Trader software had been decommissioned in April 2020, a year before the hackers allegedly embedded malware in it and two years before the 3CX employee downloaded the tainted software. When asked if they had determined how many people download the tainted software, a company spokesperson for Trader Technologies confirmed number of individuals who downloaded the tainted software was 97. It doesn't take many people. When you think about the scale and scope of 3CX, it's an extremely popular amongst the enterprise users voice over IP program with a desktop agent. They to compromise both the Windows and Mac versions of this desktop agent and was distributed to an amazing number of companies. It doesn't take more people. It takes 97 or less. It really only took one employee at 3CX to send some ripples through an entire supply chain when you talk about targeting, really focused targeting at high level companies like that and the people who work there. So it seems like a low number, but when you think about the ripple effect of a supply chain attack, it's actually a pretty big number because they're still identifying who else may have been targeted or who else may have been compromised because if this has been quiet or they have not actioned on it, there could be these lurking in other systems. Now this is from the 3CX blog and this is Mandiant's report. And I found this particular part interesting. Mandiant identified the use of fast reverse proxy tool, which the threat actor used to move laterally within the 3CX environment. The tool was named msmpeng.exe and located in C windows slash system32 directory. Now why this is fascinating to me is because they did a report, a video that is linked down below on Sentinel-1 versus Huntress regarding a security incident with one of my clients. This was the tool identified by Huntress, but not by Sentinel-1. And Sentinel-1 has later changed her mind and starts identifying this as a bad tool, but this tool has been known to be used as several threat actors. And I noted that in my video, I dive deeper into how it's used. It's not really used that I could find at least by any legitimate companies. And it is really being used for illegitimate use across a lot of these threat actor incidents. There's been numerous ones now, including 3CX, that this is definitely something bad. And you flag it based on its behavior. It's not that itself it is a bad program, it's just a reverse proxy. But when they take the time to hide it, this is where you get behavioral analysis that should look at the behaviors of software and what they're doing, such as creating hidden folders, which was my case, or in this case, installing under Windows System 32, something called MSMPENG. You find a common signature and you find it naming something else and you reverse engineer it and go, that's actually this tool being hidden this way. Those are behavioral flags that really should be noted. 
Virus total in February 12th of 2023, when that incident happened and I did that video, was only flagging 15 out of 70. And now it's being flagged by 17 out of 69 on February 28th. That's actually when I published the video. And then on April 23rd of 2023, 22 out of 70. So slowly more and more vendors are going, yeah, that tool should just be flagged. There's not a reason to find it on a corporate network. But nonetheless, I find that pretty interesting. Now, the reason this compromise didn't turn into a total complete meltdown of the internet and all these companies being compromised in a horrible way was a couple of things. One, it was extremely targeted. The payload only was delivered to extremely narrow scope. So it's not like anyone who got the download would also get the payload. So basically they were prepping for the attack, but the attack didn't occur. The bigger things that happened to stop all of this is the cybersecurity community collaborated and coordinated quickly. The information was free flowing between all the different major players in the cybersecurity community. Lots of threat hunters were out there looking at this, understanding it, sharing the intel, putting blog posts together across just a wide array of companies. This was awesome because this makes it that much harder to do. The bar has clearly been raised for what it takes to get past modern security systems here in 2023. I'm not saying everybody has fully modern security systems. Clearly 3CX had some problems we'll talk about here in a second. But if you are running modern EDR software, you are following good modern policy it's really hard, and that's why this double supply chain attack was what it took to be able to get distributed in all these systems. Um, but the bar's really been raised, and it was just great to see the communities come together and do a lot of info sharing to quickly inform everyone what's going on, what the targets were, and how to diffuse this before it became a bigger incident. Now let's talk about how 3CX failed. Not in software, but this is really a policy failure in my opinion. It should be absolutely and implicitly clear that employees should not use work computers for personal use. This is a talking point that I hope you bring up if you're in charge of IT or IT policy for your organization or external organizations. This just needs to be a clear separation because of the dangers involved, as pointed out here. Employees should not have administrative privileges to install software. This is where the dev teams and security teams may have some differences of opinion, but the reality is if you care about security, you just can't let the devs install whatever they want. Limiting their privileges makes a lot of sense, especially if they're part of any targeted campaign where someone suggested some software that would make their life easier developing and that software happens to be some shady software. So even if it's work-related or seemingly work-related, you have to be very careful and security teams should be auditing and really locking down what gets installed on these computers and has a vetting process for it. Third, audits should be performed to make sure one and two are being followed. And not just audits, perhaps may even signs, posters, and suggestions. If you've worked in industrial manufacturing, there's all kinds of notices to put your safety glasses on, don't put your finger in the machine, and quit using your work computer for personal use. Maybe we need similar signs, but anything that helps encourage and reinforce this and then audit to make sure it's not occurring, this would have saved them a lot of trouble. It seems pretty wild to me that in the last year, we've had two major companies that we know of that Personal use of corporate assets is what led to compromise, which is the last pass incident loading a Plex server and getting Plex compromised, which led to developer credentials being compromised. And of course, 3CX with this trading software. I know many companies have policies, but that whole audit process to make sure that these policies are being followed, that is extremely clear. And if it's not clear at these smaller organizations that maybe you work at, hopefully you have ways to influence and make it clear to people. Or if you're a policymaker, whether you're IT internal or IT external, you have some influence over this. These are things you can just point to and say, hey, this is a real problem. This is why we don't allow anyone to have full admin privileges. And this is why we have a approved list of software and please quit using your work computer computer for personal use. Nonetheless, love to hear from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Let you know what you liked, you didn't like, or if I'm wrong about something. Nonetheless, I love engaging with all of you or head on my forums for a more in-depth discussion on this topic or any others I cover on my channel. Thanks.